I was in the middle of doing a differential rebuild and in the process noticed excessive side play on our ring gear carrier assembly. Uh, this is a sign that we need to reshim our carrier bearings. The carrier is held in place by these caps. It's a fairly simple job, just a little tedious and time consuming. We'll remove these bolts, allow the carrier to slide out, select shims, which I have here. We'll use our vernier calipers to select shims and move our way up and down the thickness scale until we can just barely tap the carrier into place. There should be no end play when we're done and there should be a preload on the tapered roller bearings that are installed underneath these caps. All right, I've started to remove the bolts for the bearing caps. One thing to note that these bearing caps are matched. So you'll see some arrows here that point to the outside of the axle housing. Make sure that you orient the cap in that way when you reinstall the caps. See the arrows there. And also put the left hand arrow, or put the left cap back on the left side and the right cap back on the right side. All right, I've removed the bearing caps and shims and I've got the carrier out a little bit resting on my track bar. The, I measured the shim that came out and it was, it was a 9 thousandths shim on the right hand side and nothing but the base shim on the left hand side. Now shimming the preload on the bearings also sets your backlash for your engagement with your pinion gear. So you can't just necessarily just stick a shim in on one side or the other that will affect your backlash. Since the end play was quite high I'm going to add a 12,000 shim in addition to the 9,000 shim and I'll add it to the left side. Uh, in order to decrease the backlash in the gear engagement. All right, I've added the 12,000 shim to the left hand side and I have the, nine, the original 9,000 shim in the right hand side and I just have the cap on here temporarily to keep this thing from falling out. The, pre, the end play has mostly been removed. If you fully engage it in here and push from side to side, I feel no end play. However, this wants to fall out a little too easily so I'm going to try and fit a thicker shim in there so that it can will stay in and actually have a preload on the bearings. We have the carrier almost installed now. You can see that we've got shims in the bearings in the install here. We have a 18,000 shim on the right and a 12,000 shim on the left and you can see that I don't have the cap in place because there's enough friction that this is staying in there on its own. It's preloaded. But this is not completely installed because we're going to add additional preload as we tap this shim into place, this thicker shim. We want the preload there so that as the bearings wear, you still retain the preload without getting too much end play. So I'm just going to take a brass hammer and it shouldn't require heavy hammering. If it does, that's just too much preload. Light hammering. Make sure you hit the shim and not the housing. Till it bottoms out. Make sure the other side's bottomed out. And you can see that the shim is fully in place. The gear still moves freely within the backlash zone and then now I'm turning the drive shaft when I turn the entire thing. Okay you can see that I've installed the carrier it's completely installed and the caps are torqued. I've also mounted a dial indicator magnetic base to the housing and placed the tip of the dial indicator on the edge of a gear tooth and then to measure the backlash you'll very easily be able to feel the resistance of when you actually start turning the pinion. So you won't actually turn the pinion, you'll just measure the backlash. I'll just adjust this so that it's right at 40 thousandths on the, on the dial and I'm going to now push it to the other side, wiggle it back and forth and you can see we're at 12, 52 thousandths so it's 12 thousandths backlash. I'm going to come back, check it again 
and you'll hear possibly the slight clunking sound of the backlash. So we're at 12 thousandths. The spec is 8 to 12 thousandths. Uh, for this car, track day car, we'll set it on the loose side because the temperatures are going to be a lot higher than in street use. And 12 thousandths is right on the money.